How's it going, Jacob Bond Performance? Got a little bit of a project on our hands today in the shop here with Mark, and he's got his blown up uh, O2Q non-performance pack transmission there. And I just got done cleaning the cases of his performance pack. Uh, this is out of a 2018 O2Q transmission. So the the main difference being the differential on the performance pack has a spline on the output shaft of the differential. I'm repeating myself, but this is all one take, so deal with it. Uh, so to be able to run the new trans in his older car without performance pack, we're taking the diff from the old trans. If it's good, if not, I have a spare kicking around and putting it in the new trans and also kind of doing a damage assessment of what broke and why we're suspecting probably fourth gear right fourth and sixth is what i'm thinking so here's the gear set from the new one these all look good this only has eighty thousand miles on it we've got all our hardware laid out here uh arp bolts if we don't end up reusing his diff i've got one sitting back there that the ring gear will need to put back on. So yeah, I don't know how much of the actual process I'm gonna show just because I've already got a million videos on this kind of stuff. But uh, so far as we know, this stuff is all kind of like Legos and interchangeable. VW is very profitable, profitable because they do things that way, especially with the MQB platform. They've kind of uh, mastered cost savings by using the same part number across more or less the entire fleet. So they've got it less engineering costs, less tooling cost, less parts of stock at the dealership, less specialty tools that they need. So bring it, this thing torn down, show you what it looks like on the inside because something went boom in there and uh, very crunchy and kind of left them stranded when it happened. So we're going to see what the culprit was. So, Fourth gear is definitely not having a great time in the old trans. The uh, the magnet was doing its job though. <laughs> As we're just picking teeth out of everywhere. So we'll see if this differential is still good in a minute, but uh, it looks like this trans is savable. I don't see any damage so far outside of the input shaft, which is fourth and sixth gear. So it's always good to have a spare. And uh, what we were talking about was beefing this one up and putting an LSD in it and then swapping the serviceable trans that we'll have from today's build for uh, even more serviceable trans being this one. So let's bust it apart and see if the diff will get us what we need. So now we've got the non-performance pack diff cleaned up we can show you the difference between the two the smooth outer output shaft versus the splined one for golf r and performance pack cars that are driving that external gearbox or clutch pack so this thing cleaned up good uh we're going to reuse this and this one will be up for grabs if any of you guys have a broke one and want to buy it off mark. So it turns out it's not just fourth and sixth gear. That should be third. Yeah. It's all chewed up. And it looks like... I don't know. I wouldn't trust the synchros with that much metal in there. At least not without completely disassembling them. But luckily this gear set that we're going to use is all minty, fresh, good to go.
So we've got everything shimmed, uh, new bearings on the diff. So we've got everything stacked up. It rolls over smooth, new drive flange seals in. So we're gonna pop the top cover on, make sure everything rolls over nice, and then clean this made in surface, throw the non-curing sealing in there and button this thing back up. So we're reapplying the schmooze for a second time here because I forgot that the input shaft, sorry, I'm making everybody dizzy walking around like this. The input shaft upper bearing has a flat on it that needs to point towards the idler gear, like so for it to fully seat into the transmission case. Can make it dizzy again. Here, up against that flat. So you'll never get it fully seated if you don't have that clocked correctly. So I forgot, we had to pop it back apart. We're going back together. I will show you the part number of the schmooze if you don't want to buy it for like $80 from the dealership. 85, 420 is the number. And yeah, we're gonna button this thing back up for the final time. Again. Again. <laughs> and that'll be a wrap. So I am glad to report that my Lego theory is true, that you can just swap the innards and the outards are compatible. So what could have been a whoops is no big deal at all with getting the performance pack trans for a non-performance pack car. Able to save the, the diff and everything, worked out good. All right, here it is. Everything's all buttoned up. Spins over nice and smooth. Everything torqued to spec, shimmed to spec. And so it's confirmed the Legos are interchangeable. Um, if you were wanting to do this yourself, the non-performance pack and performance pack axle cups are not interchangeable. So if you're starting from scratch without a transmission somehow, that's something that you need to consider. Um, yeah, so next time we're going to do a wave track or a Peliquin or something fun, but this will get him back on the road. Uh, everything checks out good inside, so should be good for several years of, uh, of fun. And uh, the next one will bulletproof it a little bit with some fun parts to keep that fourth gear flex from imploding the transmission. So thanks for watching. If you made it to this point, we'll see you next time.